think most people believe that DMEC is impossible in an eye with silicone oil. And the reason for that is because silicone is a lubricant and theoretically it should be impossible to stick something to the back of a patient's cornea if the eye is filled with a lubricant. But then also secondarily, you know, remember eyes with silicone oil, those patients are prohibited from lying flat for any prolonged period of time. And most people, when they get an endothelial graft, be it a DSEC or a DMEC, are instructed to line supine for a day or two or more after the operation. And for these reasons, I think there are currently, as of today, January 2025, no published report of endothelial keratoplasty being done in an eye with silicone oil of any sort, be it a DSEC or a DMEC. However, the reason I'm making you this video is to show that DMEC is possible even in these eyes. Even in an eye filled with silicon oil, the operation can be done. This is a video that we made from a patient who traveled to see us now about two months ago. He came from Canada with a history of multiple retinal detachments and an eye filled with silicone oil. And this is the surgical video of his operation of his DMEC. And I wanna walk you through the steps of this procedure, explain what was difficult and special and different about this eye, about eyes filled with silicone oil, and how you can do DMEC in these eyes yourself. So the way the operation starts is the same way we start all of our DMEC surgeries. We do them in the office. We make uh, topical anesthesia supplemented with oral Valium, and we add one cc of subtenons Expirel. And it is very important not to over inject behind the eye. And the reason is, is that these eyes with silicone oil tend to be soft. They're soft eyes. You touch them and they feel hypotenus. However, what is deceiving about these eyes is they have high posterior pressure. The reason is that with the back of the eye being filled with silicone oil, that silicone oil floats. It's more buoyant than aqueous. And so consequently, even though the eye is soft, you still get this very difficult to eradicate posterior pressure coming up from behind the lens and from behind the iris. And normally you deal with a shallow anterior chamber and a soft eye by injecting fluid. You inject saline or balanced salt solution into the anterior chamber and that typically firms up the eye and deepens the chamber, but it has a paradoxical effect in eyes with silicone oil. The more saline you inject, that saline misdirects behind the silicone oil and it shallows the anterior chamber. It contributes to the posterior pressure. So the trick to these surgeries is to avoid your natural tendency to inject fluid into the eye. So we're gonna start the same way that we always do by making a few paracentesis with our side port incision. These knives, incidentally, these are made by BVI, and I have no financial interest in them whatsoever, but I like these knives better than I like an Alcon knife because they're cheaper and sharper, and I just prefer that. Now you'll notice I'm using this long 30 gauge cannula and I'm testing that bubble to see if it can be aspirated. And it cannot. You see that that silicone bubble resists my attempts to aspirate it. And maybe that would have been more successful if I had used a lower gauge, in other words, a bigger cannula, something like a 27 gauge cannula. But that's not success, but we don't have that here. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm trying to burp that bubble out through the wound. And you'll notice that as I inject fluid, more silicone comes forward. So the key is to try to avoid injecting saline. You want to keep saline out of the eye. So I'm trying to just burp that incision and let the silicone oil sneak out. Now, decimetorexis, I'm sort of fast forwarding through a little bit. It's normal, it's just tedious in this eye. And I'm not sure why it takes so long. Sometimes you just have sort of this ratty, crumbly decimase membrane that doesn't strip off in a nice sheet, even when you're operating on an eye with Fuchs dystrophy or regular bullous keratopathy. But here in this eye with silicone oil, it also was just very shreddy and floppy. It took a long time to remove. So rather than bore you with the details of me picking away at those strands of decimase membrane, I thought just to forward through here to the good part of the operation, which will be unedited. 
So here's the graft. It's in the injector, poised over the incision, ready for delivery into the eye. You look down into that pupil and you can see this abnormal reflex. That's air that's behind the IOL because of course this is a vaguely unicameral eye and so you're gonna get air misdirect. Now, it's okay, air floats on top of the silicone oil so it's not contributing to the shallowing of the anterior chamber Whereas if I had stripped under saline, that would have made the problem much worse. So especially in these eyes filled with silicone oil, you really want to do your decimeterexis under air. So the concept here is I'm going to try to inject the graft and I'm going to try to unfold it with a minimum of extra fluid having to be injected inside of the eye. So here we go. I'm positioning the graft into this three millimeter incision. And there it is delivered into the eye. It's a big graft. I prefer big grafts in eyes that have had vitrectomy or eyes that are, have bullous keratopathy. And I'm just adding a little bit of saline to the anterior chamber just to get the graft to perk up a bit. And now I'm going to apply some up bumps. These are perpendicular taps to shove the graft up into the nasal angle, which kind of breaks it open from the inside. That's checking the Motsuro sign, which is positive. So the graft is right side up. And you'll notice rather than deepening the chamber, I'm shallowing it. I'm using the main wound to perform the help yourself technique, which is where you just shove the graft over a little bit. And this allows me to manipulate and maneuver the graft without injections of saline into the eye. These are some Dirazomer taps that I apply to iron out that little lingering edge fold. And now the graft is basically 100% unfolded. I'm going to use the main wound to put an air bubble underneath it and lift it up to the posterior surface a bit. Now what I'm going to do is because I can't quite see the edges of the graft, I'm just putting a little bit of saline in the eye to shrink the bubble to make sure I've got the edges completely unfolded over there nasally. And once I'm satisfied with that, I'll inflate the anterior chamber the rest of the way. And this concludes the operation. Now. We did leave the patient lying supine on the operating room table for one hour after this operation. And then we sat them up and required or recommended no further supine posturing at home. The patient came from Canada on Wednesday. We performed the operation on Thursday. We saw him again on Friday and on Monday. Here is what he looked like on Monday. This is his corneal OCT. You'll notice that he has maybe about a 30% air bubble residual in the anterior chamber. He still has got about one to two plus corneal edema, but the graft is perfectly attached. And by slit lamp examination, this is what his eye looked like. This is what the clarity of the cornea looked like on this third post-operative day. So you'll notice he still has got that about 30% air bubble. He does still have maybe one to two plus corneal edema but the graft is perfectly attached and he has no silicone oil in the anterior chamber. So we have been doing these operations for quite some time now. And what we have observed is that DMAC is indeed possible in eyes that have silicone oil in the, even in the anterior chamber. Um, but certainly in the eye, it's still possible to do this operation. The key considerations are the patients do not have to posture supine at home for the graft to stick. It's sufficient seemingly to keep them supine in the operating room and then sit them up. The patients do not seem to have an inordinate amount of graft attachments. It seems to be about on par with what you would normally expect. The patients do not get silicone oil in the anterior chamber postoperatively. These look like good normal eyes that have DMAC for any other reason. The key surgical considerations are these are eyes that are hypotenuse with shallow anterior chambers. And your temptation is to try to deepen the chamber and firm the eye up by injecting aqueous. But you should resist that temptation. It is likely to be counterproductive. And that typically the way you want to manipulate and unfold these graphs is by direct physical touching with a cannula in the anterior chamber or by taps on the surface of the cornea. It's probably not possible to aspirate those bubbles easily. You want to burp them from the eye and you want to avoid encouraging them to migrate in the first place by resisting the temptation to inject fluid. So I hope this gives you a little confidence to start doing 
at least endothelial grafting in these eyes with silicone oil. The surgery is possible, and it is way better than a PK. You know, these eyes with silicone oil, they have uncertain visual potentials. Sometimes they have a low visual potential. And you don't want to commit that person to taking care of a PK for the rest of their life for who knows how much benefit. But you can do this. You can do this operation for people and give them a fighting chance of good or better vision without a light, lifelong litany of major responsibilities to take care of. So the thing I always say is DMEC is possible in virtually any eye, even a situation like this. Give it a try.